England's trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Caught on camera. If you found yourself sitting in stop traffic on 95 North this morning, here is the why. There was a multi-car crash that left multiple cars on fire. ABC6 News reporter Natalie Norrie spoke to one man who escaped the flames and survived the crash. She's live now in Pawtucket. Natalie? Thank you, Doreen. We're just above exit 42 where that scary crash happened this morning. Traffic was backed up all the way down towards that exit 39 area and you can still see the burn marks on the pavement. It's basically taking up two lanes here on 95 North and I was able to speak with someone who was involved in the crash this morning who got out of their vehicle just in time. Around 630 Thursday morning, a crash involving four cars happened on 95 North by exit 42 in Pawtucket. What started as a rear end accident ended with three vehicles engulfed in flames. I was able to stop in time, but unfortunately people behind me, you know, weren't able to. I remember just getting hit three times. Ramos recalls the crash, saying he saw a Volvo filled with smoke and those inside of the cars were trying to get out through passenger sides. The fire started almost immediately. I, I think uh, when the truck hit the Volvo in the rear, and then it just, the flame started right away. Ramos says he's an alert driver and tries to be careful on the road. But standing on his own two feet after looking at his car charred on the highway, he shared one tip that he believes helped him survive the scary crash. One message, and, and, I, and I hope it, it reaches people, is definitely pray every morning. I, and this morning I prayed that I would get to work safe and come home safe. And I'm here now, even with this severe accident, you know, that could have been deadly with all these flames. At this time, we have reached out to Rhode Island State Police, who is handling this investigation for more information about injuries and details, but we have got no confirmation on that yet. So stick with ABC6 because we will have more information coming out on this story later. For now, reporting live in Pawtucket, Natalie Nori, ABC6 News. All right, Natalie, thank you. We turn now to an ABC6 follow-up. The Woonsocket City Council coming down with that decision last night to oust Lisa Baldelli Hunt as mayor after voting 3-2 to two following two days of hearing testimony from both sides. ABC C6 News reporter Yanni Trigella spoke to residents in Woonsocket reacting to the vote. He has more. After nearly 12 hours of testimony, City Council voting overnight to remove the now former mayor Lisa Baldelli Hunt from office, finding her in violation of four of the nine allegations brought forward by City Council member Denise Sierra. A residents I spoke with in Woonsocket today saying they're not pleased with that decision. That's because although Baldelli Hunt has been removed from her post as mayor, it's likely going to be short lived as she's running unopposed in the upcoming November election. Until then, it will be current council president Daniel Gendron who will serve as interim mayor after being sworn in last night. Baldelli Hunt was accused by another council member of failing to execute contracts with the police union and giving stipends to employees without city council approval, among other accusations as well. But even though residents we spoke with in Woonsocket this morning agreed those issues are a serious matter, most called this all a waste of time. I just think it's stupid because nobody's running against us. She's just got to get back in. It's a waste of time. It's kind of ridiculous since she's the only one running for mayor next year for the next election. So she's just going to be voted right back in. So I don't know why they did this. It's like a witch hunt kind of thing. And with Baldelli Hunt likely to be reelected as mayor again in November, she told us last night after the vote that she has a message to her supporters to remember the council members that voted her off as being mayor when their time is due for reelection. In Woonsocket, Yanni Trigellis, ABC6 News. And now to your voice, your vote and Governor Dan McKee and other state Democrats on the steps of the state house this morning to tell the endorsement of Planned Parenthood Votes R.I. PAC. The organization endorsed a slate of Democratic candidates for office, highlighted by McKee and Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos. A representative for the group highlighted the recent Supreme Court decision on abortion, putting its accessibility in question in other states, asking voters to get involved to keep things as they are in Rhode Island. Reproductive rights are on the ballot throughout the country and right here in Rhode Island as well in the governor's race. Shortly after the Dobbs decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, I had a call from President Biden and the other governors across the country. Reaffirmed our commitment to act at the state level and governors are the last line of defense. Other endorsements went to AG Peter Narona, Secretary of State candidate Greg Amore, and Treasurer candidate James Diosa.
And in an ABC 6 News update today, a bus driver shortage is again causing Ripta to cancel some Providence school trips today. The picture right here provided by Ripta shows the trips that did not run for Providence students this morning. That includes trips at Central and Classical High Schools, Hope High School and Mount Pleasant High School. Students can take any Ripta bus to Kennedy Plaza where then they can transfer to a route that serves their school. Ripta did have staff at Kennedy Plaza this morning to help the students out. Meanwhile, Governor McKee's opponent, Republican Ashley Kalis, is blasting the governor over the Ripta shortages this morning. Kalis tweeting, quote, this is a complete failure of leadership. Students rely on public transportation to get to and from school. The governor's lack of a plan to address this recurring problem should be of great concern to every parent. Our children deserve better. And now we turn to the weather as we take a live look outside this afternoon with our sky cam. And what's that? The sun? <laughs> Finally, after a couple of dreary days, Chelsea, we're getting a chance to see the sun today. Yes, as promised, we are seeing some nice blue sky. The sun has made a full comeback and the temperatures are responding nicely as well. It hasn't been until late September that we had temperatures in the low 70s range. And now we're sitting in the low 70s in the Providence area. Dew points in the upper 50s with a breeze coming in out of the northeast. The northeast breeze is still a cool wind direction, but it's it's lighter today and that sun kind of counterbalances the breeze from the northeast. So we're able to warm up to at least the seasonable levels, if not slightly above that. Most of us, at least in the mid to upper 60s, there are a few 70s. All of us running significantly warmer than yesterday at this time, about 5 to 15 degrees warmer across the area. Satellite radar image shows you that most of us have sunshine, although out over the Cape, still for spots farthest to the east, a few lingering clouds, a few little areas of some mist, although that is going to continue to push offshore, and all of us get brighter and brighter through the afternoon. Full sunshine for the afternoon hours across Providence. Temperatures in the low 70s range. We have a partly clear and seasonable night ahead of us, and another warm day tomorrow. I'll let you know what the weekend looks like coming up in just a few minutes. Join Chelsea, thank you. And a peaceful resolution at a home in Lincoln after receiving reports of domestic violence and shots fired in a home. Police responding to a home on Valley Street Wednesday. Officers and state troopers set up a perimeter and evacuated the neighbors and they were able to make contact with a person inside that house. Lincoln Police Chief Brian Sullivan says the unidentified suspect surrendered peacefully. No word on any charges at this time. And no charges for a Newport police detective accused of using excessive force during an incident from over the summer. You may remember this incident on June 26. This video is part of it. The cell phone footage appeared to show Newport police officers punching and wrestling two men to the ground on Thames Street. One of the officers is now being identified as Detective Patrick Walsh. The state attorney general saying today that Walsh will not be punished for the incident. Still to come on ABC 6 News at noon, an alliance of countries sharply cutting oil production may seem a little complicated. We'll break down the big impact it could actually have on your wallet. And later, Halloween is growing near. What candy you should have on your porch if you want to put a smile on the kids' faces in Rhode Island, at least according to a new survey.
Turning to our consumer news now, there are growing concerns over whether gas prices will start rising again after the OPEC Plus cartel announced that it's cutting oil production by 2 million barrels a day. It's a move that could deal another blow to a global economy already struggling with high inflation. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. New concerns that gas prices could soon spike again nationwide after OPEC Plus announced it's slashing oil production by 2 million barrels a day to drive up oil prices. The group of oil producing nations led by Russia and Saudi Arabia planning the move for November just in time for America's midterm elections. It will affect in the end all of us by somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 30 cents a gallon. It's bad timing for Democrats in Congress and the White House, where officials say it's a clear sign OPEC is siding with Russia amid the war in Ukraine, harming the interests of the U.S. and European nations dependent on Russian oil. President Biden now considering releasing at least 10 million barrels from the nation's strategic oil reserves next month, though it's unclear how much that might help. Disappointment, and uh, we're looking at what alternatives you may have. Gas prices have already been creeping up. The national average at 387, a four cent increase overnight. In California, the average is at 642, one gas station topping eight bucks a gallon. It's crazy. The reason? Maintenance at refineries causing a supply supply shortage as well as an increase in demand for fuel. OPEC's cuts in production also expected to drive up heating and holiday travel costs. And it just feels like you're just caught under a wave that's bigger than you have any control over. Meanwhile, amid a Wall Street Journal report claiming the U.S. is preparing to scale down sanctions against Venezuela's authoritarian government in order to boost oil production, a National Security Council spokesperson telling ABC News there are no plans to change our sanctions policy without constructive steps from the Maduro regime. In a controversial trip to Saudi Arabia last year, President Biden lobbied the Saudis to boost oil production, though he claimed today that wasn't the point of the visit. OPEC's latest move shows how little influence the administration has over the Saudi regime. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And still to come here on ABC 6 News at noon, the short-term rental registry now open in Rhode Island, why Newport's mayor says it's a big upgrade. And Chelsea has a look at your full seven-day forecast right after this.
Changes are coming to how Airbnbs and other short-term rentals will be operating in Rhode Island. The state will now require owners to register their property. Rhode Island's new short-term rental property registry is now live. Property owners need to register by January 1st or face a series of financial penalties. The issue got more attention after a 22-year-old URI student was stabbed to death at a party that took place at a Newport rental home last year. I think it's sending a message to people. You can't just come in here, buy a piece of property, leave town and leave it to, you know, some booking agent to uh, occupy the house at your will and not be responsible for the neighborhood. It is a $50 fee for registration that makes it valid with the state for two years. And TF Green adding another feather to its hat. The airport in Warwick named the fourth best airport in the United States, according to Condé Nast Traveler. This is the third consecutive year TF Green ranked in the top five. The Reader's Choice Award was based on traveler rankings and reviews. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Well, no need to travel anywhere today. We have a beautiful fall day happening outside. We did get a new drought monitor this morning, and you can see there's improvements across Rhode Island once again. The abnormally dry level, that yellow shading, the lowest level of the drought monitor before we just go kind of back to average, is taking over for much of Rhode Island. Still some moderate drought conditions along the coastline through southeastern Mass. Not a ton of change for Massachusetts. That being said, the rain from yesterday is not factored into this drought monitor. Block Island right now is showing you dry conditions. We're seeing some sunshine across the area, a much brighter day across southern New England. Temps are in the upper 60s and low 70s, 70 degrees in Providence right now. A huge change from where we were yesterday at this time. I apologize. I don't know what that noise is. It's right in the other room over here. Breeze is coming in out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. The trend for today gets us into the 70s. This afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, a cold front comes through and will be significantly cooler for uh, uh, the weekend. Satellite radar image shows you dry conditions right now. We are looking at dry weather across southern New England for today, really for the majority of the seven day forecast. That low system is pushing offshore. There's a little front that's going to come through overnight Friday into Saturday morning. That's where that drop in temperatures is going to happen. You're seeing sunshine outside for the area through the rest of this afternoon. Overnight, a few passing clouds, temperatures in the 50s. And then as we head into tomorrow, you'll see sunshine for most of the day. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Quick front comes through overnight Friday. And you're going to see a couple passing clouds and perhaps a sprinkle. And then from there, we dry out and you'll get brighter again for the weekend. But again, it is significantly cooler. Tropical outlook right now. There are two areas. Tropical post potential tropical cyclone 13 down in the northern fringe of South America going to continue to push towards the west may potentially become a hurricane, but it is staying far away from the United States, far away from most of the Caribbean islands, really staying pretty far south right along the equator. There's also this system way out closer to Africa, not going to do too much there. Today, we're looking at the morning clouds giving way to more and more sunshine. Anybody that still has clouds outside, we're getting brighter and brighter. We'll be partly clear and mild overnight. Temps in the mid 50s range. Tomorrow, you're looking at partly sunny conditions. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s range, a much warmer day once again. But again, that's short lived. We have a front that's going to come through. We're looking at temperatures that are going to drop on Saturday down into the upper 50s. Overnight lows in the 30s and low 40s. And then Sunday and Monday will be sunny with temperatures staying in the low to mid 60s. Doreen? All right, thank you, Chelsea. Still not sure what that noise was, but I know I wasn't vacuuming. <laughs> That's for sure. Still to come here on ABC 6 News at noon. A development in the deadly shooting on the set of rust as those involved reach a settlement. And my fans of Velma from Scooby-Doo are happy to hear about a confirmation for her character.
In entertainment news today, an undisclosed settlement has been reached in the wrongful death lawsuit of an onset shooting that killed the cinematographer. Helena Hutchins was fatally shot by actor Alec Baldwin on the set of Rust last year. Hutchins' husband issued a statement saying the case will be dismissed as a result of the legal agreement. Matthew Hutchins will be named an executive producer on the movie and will get part of the profits made as a result of the settlement. Work on Rust is expected to resume early next year. Well, many Scooby-Doo fans have often wondered if Velma was gay, and now it seems to be confirmed. In a clip from the upcoming HBO Max Scooby-Doo Halloween movie, Velma tells Daphne that she's crushing big time over a female character named Coco Diablo. Director James Gunn said he tried to make Velma explicitly gay in the live-action Scooby-Doo movie back in 2001, but he said the studio ended up changing his script. You can catch the new Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo later this month. And still to come here on the news at noon, what kind of candy is tops in Rhode Island? We'll take a look at a new map to show each state's favorite picks. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. Halloween is right around the corner and CandyStore.com is out with a map of each state's favorite sweet treat. In Rhode Island, Twix comes in at number one. In Mass, it's Sour Patch Kids and nationwide the most popular Halloween candy was Reese's Cups, followed by Skittles in second place, M&M's taking third. Some estimates put candy spending for Halloween at $3.1 billion. Hmm. Twix isn't Crazy. even in the top ten. I know, but I don't for know some that. reason it's Rhode Island's favorite. Okay. Our intern said which one left or right. That's a good one. <laughs> that was funny. That's a good yeah, one. No, it's one. Reese's for me all the yeah, way. Yeah, agreed. Peanut butter. All right, so as the country goes, <laughs> so do Chelsea and Yeah, Maureen. exactly. <laughs> I don't buy. No. I don't know who got who voted on yeah, that. It wasn't us. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> are looking at a nice warm day across southern New England, continuing to clear out from this morning out towards far eastern Mass. Still a few clouds lingering, but overall we're all getting brighter. Temps in the low 70s, mid 70s tomorrow, and then we'll 
be sunny and cooler on Saturday. Temps in the upper 50s range. Uh, a little cold front comes through overnight Friday into Saturday. Should come through relatively dry, but you'll see the sunshine continuing just a lot cooler for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Temperatures staying around 60 degrees. Those overnight lows chilly too, upper 30s and low 40s. Oh, we'll take the chill though after those dreary yes. days. We'll take the chill sunshine. as long as it's got the exactly. sunshine. All right, Chelsea, thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day.